Hello and welcome to an uh, overview and installation uh, tutorial of the um, PolySP uh, component, uh, the polyphonic sample player component, actor component for Unreal Engine. Uh, this component was created with version 4.25.4 and um, this is my first submission to the marketplace so I am going to try and to make it so that you can create a project from it and um, if you do, if that's the case if that's what's happened you should have a folder with this information and uh, the, pro the project in there you should have a readme file uh, with our discord link that you can come pop pop up anytime you want and talk to me I'm usually there and so let's look at the project and see what comes with the project I'm gonna play it for uh, a second or two and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about what's going on in here so once you start the map you can see that you have a, a bunch of notes laid out on the floor and on the walls and everything is white so down here you can uh, what this does and we're, we're using an interface here and I'll show you in later videos how it works uh, but uh, what we're doing here is loading a patch. The first patch that comes in is this patch right here. Patch Piano Attack 0 Release 0. So we got some notes here that we can test. Uh, and VAL stands for Velocity. So this is notes with the velocity of 127. Okay, so you can see it's polyphonic, it plays several notes at the same time. And here we have a velocity of 59. The reason I put this here is because the, the piano patch has a different samples for different velocities. Okay, so this is a bit more muffled, right? And you got the same here, velocity of 59, a minor chord. And then major chords with velocity of 127. Notice that this patch doesn't have any release, so I'll show you how to change the attack and release, obviously. But if we now choose one with a release of one, loading that patch up, you can see that even when I come away, we got a one second release time. This is in seconds, so like here we have alpha second release time for the violin patch. So let's open up the violin patch. You can see the patch loading there on the left hand side saying how many samples it contains and the polyphony and the name of the patch. That's our violin. Now the violin has three, three samples and there are certain instruments, and that's why the, the piano has a lot of samples. I've used a lot of samples on the piano. Certain instruments that are not going to sound very well with very little samples. For example, that's not the case for the flute. It actually sounds good even with uh, little samples. Kind of good. <laughs> so here you can do a piano roll. You have a bunch of notes from C3 to C to B4. Right? You can play around with that. You got some pentatonic chords here. So yeah, that's the example and that's the video tutorials. Uh, you probably don't need that, but that's going to open up a web browser with a playlist we're currently on. Uh, if not in the playlist, you can go there and open it up. So uh, flute, piano, you can try these different settings for the patches here. And let's look at what we get uh, when we get the, the the project so it comes in in this folder saying MPI music tools this is because I'm creating several music tools for an Unreal Engine and this poly SP is just the first tool that I'm releasing I'm ho I'm uh, working on more and I'm hoping to release them soon if uh, if it gets approved in the marketplace obviously so th and that's why you have these structs here um, uh, and um, enums these guys are going to be used uh, for other tools that I'm working on and the music functions as well so if I open up the music functions here you can see that there's a lot of functions here that you can use I've showed you these in the first video uh, the get note for example it's uh, it's a really cool one you can look at so if we make here uh, 
um, a struct you can choose a note here right the different octave for that note and then on the other side what you get is you get the note in the octave as well as an enum okay so if I do equal enum you can see the same thing on this side but you also get the MIDI pitch and this is important for MIDI so later on uh, I got some MIDI stuff that I'm working on as well and if you if you're using MIDI this is really cool and also the frequency if you want to use frequency analysis or something like that this is really important and, and necessary for that kind of, um, of stuff so uh, I just realized I got frequency misspelled right there it's probably the only one anyway um, so you get this and this is very handy uh, for your own projects and let's see what else do we get so we got the basic example which has the map uh, loaded that we were just checking out uh, with some blueprints uh, interface the pads um, the notepad which is all these pads that are here and if you select one of them you can change the note in, a, in the octave and and the name will change so if I grab this F3 notice that if I turn it into F sharp now it's an F sharp and I can uh, I can change the velocity of it as well there you go you can see the velocity changing right there now for velocity I should mention a maximum velocity in MIDI and that's why I'm going with MIDI here because it's um, because it's common so maximum velocity for MIDI is usually 127 from 0 to 127 and this allows you to map uh, like I said uh, different uh, tonalities to different velocities and you can play with that so the meat of the plugin is in, in here inside of the, the BP folder where you get your actor component and then you get some handy uh, structures that help developing uh, uh, these, these actor components. Inside the patches is where you fix up your patches. You got this, this structure and this is the main structure. So if I open up, you can see that I have different folders. So for every patch that I create, I create a different folder. You can use the same thing. Go right click new folder or add new folder. And so you can see that the flute only has these two, these two uh, notes in C4 and C6 that I exported for my DAW. And if I open up these, our patches here, uh, let me see which one is the flute this is the flute so if I shift and click this it will open everything from my samples and you can see it's two samples in there uh, this is C4 I exported it in C4 so the sample pitch is like the root pitch right so C4 you gotta say the same it, it expects you to give it the right uh, pitch of the sample but now the coverage, the coverage is where in the keyboard it's going to cover from. And you see that I have from C3 to B4. And I want it to cover minimum velocity of 0 to a maximum velocity of 127 because I'm just going to use this sample. And then I got C6, so sample pitch C6. And it's going to cover from C5, which it's where the other one ends to B7, one octave up. Now it's important to refer the, the, the octaves here. If you go, you can go over an octave up from the root pitch and an octave down from the root pitch. So I could go from, um, I could go from B5, uh, uh, C5 down here, I could go, and I am doing that, to B7. So it's one octave down, one octave up. If you try to use more than that range, first of all, even if it let you, it would sound very crappy. And it, it, it doesn't let you. So uh, after one octave down or one octave up, the same note will play. Okay? So important to keep that in mind. If you want a full keyboard, you're going to have to use more samples. Now, I want to look here at the piano. Oh, thank you very much, uh, Unreal. I want to look at the piano and I want to show you. Um, we have a lot of samples for the piano, 29 samples. 
what I got here is I got C0 underscore 100. This means that I in my in my DAW 100 is the maximum um, velocity, but in MIDI we we usually 127 is the maximum velocity. So what I did here is I mapped C C0 right from A minus one to D sharp zero. So it's basically covering, uh, I believe, five five notes, five to six notes. Because it's a piano, I found that, that this is the best way uh, to make it sound good. If you have a bigger range, like trying to fill an whole octave with just one note for a piano, it doesn't sound that good. For other instruments, it may sound good. For the flute, it works, but not for a piano. And this one, I'm going from minimum velocity of 60 to maximum velocity of 127, which means if the velocity it's in between these two values, it's going to trigger this sample. And I have another sample, let me just shift click here, which is a velocity exported at 60. And this velocity will be triggered from minimum velocity of 0 to a maximum velocity of 59, which is what's missing on this other one. So if you, if you reach a velocity of 70, it fits inside this and it will trigger that sample and if you reach a velocity of let's say 40 it will come in between this minimum and maximum velocity and will trigger this sample okay you can see that the note range here is the same for both samples so a way you can do this is as soon as you do this one you can come in here and you can say duplicate and then all you have to do is change the velocity and the sample instead of having to change everything again okay so duplicate is this is very handy if you want to delete one of these samples you can use delete if you want to insert in between you can use insert and if you want to duplicate you can use duplicate okay be very careful with this button here because this will remove all the the patches that, that have been created okay so do not press that button these up here don't don't mind about this you can just pull this up and forget it. Okay, so if you want to add a, sam uh, a patch, you come here and you add a patch. You press this, you got a new patch, you name it. Don't leave it at none, name it. And then you can start adding samples by pressing this button and uh, adding your WAV samples. This is just wave samples, okay? There's no sound cues up in here. Uh, unless uh, Epic wants me to use sound cues, then I'll use sound cues because you can add sound cues up on, on here if you like. Right, let's just get rid of this one. I'll save this. And I'm just going to show you the samples. Uh, the piano, for example, as you can see, it's not as many as it looks, but here you got C0 at 100 velocity, C0 at 60, C1 at 100. C1, I used C and I used F, okay? So F is covering three notes, uh, F is covering three notes, and C is covering four or five notes. And it gave me the best results for the piano. Of course, the violin, uh, it doesn't sound good. This is not a very good sounding violin. You would need to use more notes than I used here. It's using up to uh, one to two octaves per sample, so it doesn't sound that good. Either way, uh, we're using samples, we're creating instruments with this, so you can create whatever you like. I hope um, that this was enough to get you started. Well, of course it wasn't. Let's... I didn't want to make this video too long, but anyway, let's uh, look at how we can add the component. We haven't looked at that yet.